Hey y'all, Melissa here today, and I am wearing today's project, these fleecy, fuzzy, and soft pajama pants that have pockets. There's also a free pattern that I use to make these. I've got all the info for that linked below, so check that out, and then meet me back at the camera to see how to sew these up. Let's talk about resizing the pattern. So I have a one quarter inch scale pattern here in front of me because it's easier to demonstrate what I'm talking about on here. This pattern is designed for about a 35, 36 inch hips. And above that, you want seven or eight inches of ease because these are loose fit and they're supposed to be easy fit. If you need to make the pattern bigger or smaller, you'll notice these gray lines on the pattern. And to make it bigger around, so say you've got somebody with 37 inch hips, so you wanna add an inch all the way around. You'll cut on that line, and then you want to move it apart one quarter inch, because it'll be one quarter plus one quarter on the back, that's half, and then you wanna match that on the front pattern piece, cut it on the same line, move it a quarter inch across. That'll give you a half inch across the front, half inch plus half inch, one inch all the way around bigger. If you needed to make it an inch smaller, you would overlap one quarter of an inch because we're gonna have four pieces here. You can also lengthen and shorten the pattern and that's what these lines are for. So this line up here will lengthen or shorten the crotch seam. So that's from the waist to the crotch level. And if you need to make that longer or shorter, you cut on this line, you overlap or you spread. If you need to make the overall inseam longer, you're gonna cut on this line, which happens to be at about knee level, and you'll spread that. And so that'll give you a little bit more above the knee and a little bit more below the knee if you spread it out. If you overlap it, it's gonna make the entire inseam shorter. So that's how you're gonna resize the pattern based on the measurements of whoever you're sewing for. Once you've done that, then you wanna cut out all of your pattern pieces. You should have four pockets, and they should be two sets of mirror image pockets. And then you should have two backs, and those should be mirror imaged, and you should have two fronts, also mirror imaged. You're going to need either pins, or I prefer these clips, and all the tools that I'm showing here I've linked below. So the clips, I think, work better when you're using this kind of fabric, and I prefer those. And another tip for working with these kind of fuzzy fabrics, this is completely optional, you can use regular scissors to cut them out, but I really prefer my electric scissors for this use. These cut the fleece much easier, especially those multiple layers. Using the regular scissors, my hand can get really tired because it's pretty thick amounts of fabric to work through. You're also going to need one inch elastic equal to the waist measurement of the person that's going to be wearing these. And then you need either a safety pin or this is called a bodkin that will help you pull that elastic through the casing here at the end. You'll also notice before I start constructing these that I have gone and I have surged the edges of all of my pieces. I just did this after the pattern pieces were cut out. I didn't trim any fabric off. I was just doing this to contain kind of the fuzzy floaties that come off the edges of this type of fabric when you first cut it. I personally just can't deal with that all over my studio, so that's why I've done this serger stitch. You don't need a serger. You do need to be able to sew a stretch stitch. So a serger stitch is inherently stretchy, but if you're using a regular sewing machine, that's fine. You just need to be able to do a zigzag or another form of stretch stitch. And I do have a video about stretch stitches linked below. Once you're ready to sew, you need to determine what is the right and what is the wrong side of your fabric. Now. You'll notice that this particular fabric I'm using, the nap or the fur on one side is thicker and longer than it is on the other side. And it doesn't matter which side you decide wants to be the inside. That's completely up to you. You're in charge of your sewing. You just need to decide which one it is because you want to be consistent. What you don't want is to have this side facing out on your backs and then this side facing out on the front because it's gonna look weird. So pick your side. I'm gonna go with this lower nap side to the outside and this fuzzier, warmer side to the inside. Once you've done that, the next step, the first sewing step here, is going to be to take 
your pattern pieces. Start with your fronts, right sides out, and you want to fold down the casing. So we're just gonna use our elastic for this. We're not gonna stitch, but we need to know where the casing is going to be. So here is my casing. The reason I need to know this is because on the out seam here, and since I'm using a plaid, it's pretty easy to see, this line is where my casing is going to get sewn down to. So that line is also where I want to stitch my pocket. So I'm gonna take a pocket, I'm gonna make sure that it is right sides together with my front, and I want to match up this kind of the edge that juts out. So you've got that little square that juts out, I want to go with that edge matched to the side here of my front. Then, on the other side of the front, I want to make sure that I am going the same width down and take another pocket, right sides together, match it up with my front seam. So I'm going to be sewing on this side seam, I'm going to sew these pockets right here, and I am using a stretch stitch because fleece does stretch. So you'll repeat that stitching for both backs, both fronts. You want each side seam to have a pocket attached and you want all of them to be the same distance from the top because they're allowing for that waistband casing. Then what we're gonna do, we're gonna focus on the fronts for just a minute. And if you get confused on which ones are your fronts and which ones are your backs, look at this crotch seam. The front has a much shallower curve than the back. The back curve is longer. So these are my backs. I'm gonna put them aside for now. We're gonna work on just the front pieces. And what I wanna do is I want to flip my pocket around to the wrong side. So now I've got wrong sides together. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of top stitching here before I continue to sew. And um, that is going to help keep my pockets facing forward in the finished garment here. So what I'm doing is I'm folding my pocket around and you'll see it'll get real close to that, like there'll be a half inch seam allowance left there. But I'm gonna fold it around, and then on the right side, I want to top stitch it just like in between these. Once you've top stitched that edge, here's what it looks like on the right side. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pull that pocket back out and then I'm going to find the back piece that would go with this right sides together. So what I want is for the two pockets to match up with each other when I've got one back and one front right sides together. And I'm going to clip those pockets together hold, to hold them in place. And then I'm also gonna clip the side seams above and below the pocket to hold them together. And I'll go all the way down to the hem edge. And then what we'll do is we'll start up here at the waist, we'll sew down, we'll come across onto the pocket, we'll go around, up, back down, and then all the way down that side seam. Okay, here's what that looks like once it's sewn together on the right side. And here's my pocket pushed towards the front. And you can see I've got my pocket opening here. And you can also see that I did not match the plaids from the front to the back. That's because I was using fabric left over from another project and I didn't have enough room to do this. But if you are interested in matching plaids, I do have a link below that will talk to you about how to do that. Once you've done that on both sides, what you want to do is put your pants right sides together. So I've got the front to the front here and the back to the back here. We're gonna have pocket going that way. And what I want to sew next is going to be these two crotch seams. So I'm gonna sew the front and the back crotch seams. Once we've sewn those two seams, then we are going to open up our pants this way and we are going to match that crotch seam. And then I want to match from the crotch seam 
to the hemline down my inseam of my pants. So we will be stitching from the hem all the way up towards that crotch seam and then down to the other hem all in one long seam. Once we have that inseam sewn, then we need to progress to the waist casing. So we are going to fold this edge down and remember you want to fold it enough so that you have enough to go around the elastic with some overlap there. And then I'm gonna clip this up here to help hold it in place. I like to do this at my seam allowances first and it can be helpful if instead of opening your seam allowances, if you point them all in one direction. Um, if you're doing this near the pockets, it actually helps to point everything towards the front because that will help keep your pockets pointed towards the front. And then once I kind of have the seams done, then I'll come back and I will add some more clips in between those seams. I also, this is one place where I will use a pin on fleece to help keep that very tippy top of the pocket edge should get caught up in this casing. Okay, once you have that casing clipped down, folded down all the way around, we're gonna stitch all the way around. You are going to need to leave a gap because that's where we're going to insert the elastic. So I ended up leaving my gap in the front here and from wherever you left that gap, you're going to want to take your bodkin or your safety pin and go through that gap to feed your elastic through the waistband casing. Make sure you do not pull the end of your elastic through. I'm gonna pin it here and that way I'll make sure it doesn't go through. Okay, when you get back around to the front, pull your elastic out. You wanna make sure that you have not twisted it and you're gonna overlap your two ends of elastic and we're going to zigzag stitch those together. The next step is just to tug and get that elastic all the way into the casing and then you need to sew your gap shut on the machine. We're getting really close to being done. The next step, once you've got the casing, is going to be to come down to the bottom and flip up a hem and then hem the bottom edge of these pants. I like to do about a one inch hem and I just eyeball it, but you can measure if you'd like. And if your machine has a free arm option, this is a great place to use it. Okay, the very last step, once you have completed the hems on the bottom of the pants legs, is to turn the whole thing right side out. And there you go, you've got some comfy, fuzzy, and warm pajama pants. And check out this playlist for tons more clothes that you can sew for yourself.